Petri Wine brings you Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The Petri family, the family that took time to bring you good wine, invite you to listen to Dr. Watson tell us another exciting adventure he shared with his old friend, that master detective, Sherlock Holmes. And as for me... Well, I'd like to talk about those few minutes you have while you're waiting for dinner every evening. That's the perfect time for a glass of Petri California Sherry. Petri Sherry is the best beginning a good meal ever had. You really feel like you're enjoying the good things of life when you take time for a glass of Petri Sherry. Hold that glass of Sherry to the light. Look at it. It's a beautiful dark amber. Yes, and Petri Sherry is clear and fragrant, the way a good wine should be. Now taste it. You've got something. That Petri Sherry has a real heart-of-the-grape flavor. Oh, and look, if you like Sherry dry, you know, not sweet, Petri makes a fine dry Sherry. It's called Petri Pale Dry. And if you don't know yet which you prefer, the regular Sherry or the dry, why not try both? Don't buy one, buy two. But just be sure you always buy Petri. <laughs> Now, let's look in on our old friend, Dr. Watson. I'm sure he's expecting us. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening, Mr. Bartell. Draw up your usual chair. Now, get on with tonight's new Sherlock Holmes adventure. Well, how did the story begin, Doctor? It was one day in the autumn of 1887, I remember. Holmes and I were seated on either side of the fire in our Baker Street lodgings. The great man, his eyes half-closed, his long, thin fingers pressed together, lay back in his chair, filling the room with large blue clouds of tobacco smoke, and discoursing on one of his favorite subjects, Professor Moriarty. I can almost hear him now, Mr. Bartell, as he said... A Napoleon of crime, Watson, but is the organizer of half that is evil and nearly all that is undetected in this great metropolis. Oh, well, surely that's an exaggeration, Holmes. Oh, my dear fellow. He has a brain of the first order, and his agents are numerous and splendidly organized. He himself sits motionless like a spider in the center of his web. But that web has a thousand radiations, and he knows every quiver of each one of them. <laughs> it's fortunate for me that there's only one Moriarty. If every criminal were equally astute, I'd be in bankruptcy within the year. I don't think you need to worry about bankruptcy, Holmes. As I came in just now, I picked these letters up from the whole table and slipped them into my pocket. Here you are. Oh, thanks, old chap. Uh, they didn't look like bills to me. I observed the crest of the Duke of Carlisle on the top envelope. Oh, dear me. Five hundred guineas. His grace is extremely generous in his evaluation of my services. I don't agree, after all. You did save him from a shocking scandal. Oh, listen to this, Watson. <laughs> I seen you yesterday when you come to the cricket match. You wasn't watching the cricket. If you value your life, keep your filthy long nose to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and it's signed Joe the Butcher. Long nose. Who on earth is Joe the Butcher? <laughs> Am I a criminal that I was instrumental in sending to prison for a short term? He flatters himself, though. I was watching the cricket. No idea that Joe was back in practice again. I must keep an eye on him. Hello? Letter on Carlton Hotel stationery. Now, I... I said, this is interesting. Very interesting. Oh, what did you say, Holmes? Huh? Dear Mr. Holmes, I've been informed that you are a man of ability and discretion. My life is in grave danger and I need your help. Upon receipt of this letter, come to my hotel at once. I shall be expecting you. And it's signed, uh, Francois Dulac. Oh, it's rather peremptory, isn't it? No, please, just come to my hotel at once. Who is this, uh, Dulac? Anyway? What's not, fellow? Yeah? We were talking of Moriarty just now. I have a feeling that this letter may lead us to him. Well, what makes you say that? Francois Dulac, the writer of this letter, is recognized in France as the one indisputable authority on the paintings of Jean-Baptiste Greuze. Well, I still don't see the connection with Moriarty. If there is one thing Moriarty loves, more than the dazzling abstractions of mathematics and even more dazzling achievements of crime, it is the paintings of Greuze. The suggested combination of impending danger and a Greuze expert spells Moriarty to me. Get your hat and coat off, fellow. We're off to the car to Mr. Dulac at once. <laughs> Someone to unlock the door? No, 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 sir. Huh? I don't want to attract attention to our prospective clients. 
I'll tell Locks it'll be very hard to pick. Here. Yeah. The skeleton key should do the trick quite easily. Well, the man at the desk downstairs said that Monsieur Delac was in his room. You know, Watson. He said he thought he was in his room. Uh-huh. Easier than I anticipated. Come on, let's go in. It doesn't look as if anyone's occupying this room. No signs of any personal belonging. No clothes hanging in the wardrobe, no luggage. Yeah, yet he is still registered here. Hello. What's this stain on the carpet, I'll bet here? Great Scott, is it... It's a blood stain, Watson. Blood stain? And the stain is still damp. I'm afraid we're too late. Come on, we can do no more good here. You're not giving up, Holmes? No, of course not, my dear fellow. Let's see what we can find out from the hotel manager. I refuse to believe that in the 19th century a distinguished foreigner can vanish into thin air. Yes, Monsieur Dulac did have a visitor early on today, Mr. Holmes. Do you remember his name? I think it was Perkins or Parsons, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Can you describe his appearance? I think so, Mr. Holmes. He was a very tall gentleman, mm -hmm. tall and thin, with deep sunk eyes. Clean shaven? Oh, yes, sir. He had a high forehead and a funny way of moving his head from side to side. Oh, yes. Thank you, Holmes. That's almost an exact description of Mariotte. Exactly, Watson. Have you seen Monsieur Dulac since this uh, Mr. Perkins or Parsons called on him? No, I haven't, sir. But his visitor came back only an hour ago. He had some men with him. They carried some large packages out of the hotel. Packages? But not luggage, eh? No, packages, Mr. Holmes. Has Monsieur Dulac received any other visitors since he arrived here? None that have been here to see him, sir. But I understand that Sir Henry Davenant has been most anxious to get in touch with him. Sir Henry Davenant? Thank you. I'm extremely obliged to you. Come on, Watson. Always proud to be of service to Mr. Sherlock Holmes. The plot begins to clear, Watson. Well, what makes you say that, huh? Sir Henry Davenant is a millionaire whose art collection is world famous. A year ago, the papers were full of his latest acquisition, the gem of his collection, Jean-Baptiste Greur's painting, Young Girl with a Gazelle. And now it would appear that for some reason Moriarty wishes to prevent a meeting between Sir Harry Davenant and Monsieur Dulac, a Greur's expert. Now, do you see why the plot begins to clear? Very clear, but what are you going to do? Davenant said to, uh, there's something to permit. He won't have anything to do with officials, interviewers, and people like that. But we know that he wishes to consult an expert on the paintings of Jean-Baptiste Beurs. The next move should be obvious, old chap. Gracious me, you mean that you'll impersonate one? Certainly. If a Greur's expert is what he wants, then a Greur's expert is what he's going to get. <laughs> I must say, your disguise is, is amazingly effective. Uh, Missy, uh, you do me the great honor. Uh, if I appear convinced the astute Dr. Watson, how can I fail to convince Sir Henry Davenant? Oh, my dear fellow, it's uh. marvelous. <laughs> Pulling the good. Yeah. Here we are, sir. <laughs> sir Henry's house. Well, let's hope for the best, old fellow. Uh, I don't know exactly what a French art expert looks like, but I could certainly believe that you were... I only hope that I can be equally convincing in the role of a patron of the art. You certainly look your part, old chap. Good afternoon. Can I help you? Uh, my name is Vernet. André Vernet. I am most anxious to make the acquaintance of Sir Henry Davenant. I'm afraid that Sir Henry is extremely difficult to see, sir. I can tell him you're here, but he very rarely gives interviews. That is a great disappointment to me. Perhaps uh, you would just go and tell him I am a pupil or a disciple of the great François Dulac. I will do what I can, sir. Uh, come in, won't you, gentlemen? Uh, wait here for a moment. I'll take your message. Uh, what was the name again, uh, Bernay, sir? Vernet. André Vernet. And this gentleman is Mr. Watson. Very good, sir. Well, we got into the house. Now let's hope that you can impress the master of it. Now there's easier task I fear, Otto. Hmm. I've had to match opinions on the paintings of Greer's with an expert. My knowledge of the subject is uh, somewhat sketchy, I'm afraid. Yes, and mine is absolutely nil. He goes, was a naturalistic painter who flourished at the close of the 18th century, and though his paintings command a fabulous fee in this day and age, he himself died in great poverty. So... Shh, shh, shh. Someone's come. Monsieur Vernet, will you and Mr. Watson come with me, please? Sir Henry is most anxious to meet you. Merci, mademoiselle. My name is Violet Jetton. I look after Sir Henry's art collection. Indeed, a very pleasurable job, I'm sure, my dear. From what I hear, he has a magnificent gallery. He has one of the finest in the world. 
Yes. His latest acquisition is the famous young girl with the gazelle, like bird. Oh, but I'm sure you know all about that, Monsieur Vernet. I think you said in your message you were a student of the great Dulac. I have that inestimable privilege, ma'am. Oh, oh, this is secondary study. Come in. Oh, uh, thank you, Violet. Uh, you may go. Yes, Sir Henry. Uh, you're, uh, Bernie, I'm sure, and, uh, this is Mr. Watson? That's right, Sir Henry. Mr. Bernie is staying with me. I see. Well, uh, sit down, won't you? Uh, look, Bernie, uh, you're a friend of Dulac's, aren't you? I think I may claim that on earth, Miss... Then why in thunder can't I get in touch with him? He's staying at the Carlton Hotel, isn't he? He, uh, was, uh, or has been staying there, monsieur. Oui. I've left half a dozen messages for him, asking him to come and see me, and he hasn't answered one of them. I can't understand it. It's most important that I see him. Uh, monsieur is in some trouble, perhaps? Perhaps. Uh, now, you fellows are familiar with the painting by Greuze, the young lady with the gazelle, aren't you? Oh, yes, Sir Henry. Yes, indeed. Oh, you are, eh? Uh, what do you think of it? Well, uh, uh, one of the greatest daughter, works, uh, in my oh, humble opinion, oh, monsieur. Uh, of course, I have only seen a reproduction... Uh, but it seemed to me uh, to have a freshness and vigor of the flesh tints, a great firmness and brilliance of line. You are indeed uh, fortunate uh, to own it, monsieur. Hmm. Don't know how fortunate. Cost me 40,000 pounds. I still say you are most fortunate, monsieur. Would you grant me the honor of uh, to examine the original? Well, I don't know whether I ought to. I, I've had to guard it very carefully ever since this... Uh, uh, well, but perhaps in your case I can make an exception. You received threats regarding the paintings, Sir Henry? Yes, I have, Mr. Watson. And they worried me so much that I've even thought of engaging the services of a private detective. Oh, indeed, monsieur. How very interesting. Uh, the Duke of Carlisle strongly recommended a fellow by the name of uh, Sherlock Holmes. I was seriously thinking of going to him. Instead of which? He has come to you, Sir Henry. In fact, it will save us all a lot of time, I'm sure. Well, what kind of horseplay is this, sir? Who the devil are you? My name is Sherlock Holmes. Then why do you come here masquerading as a French art expert? Because I, I'd heard of your aversion to giving interviews, and I wanted to see you urgently. I felt that in the character of a supposed Greuze expert, I was uh, most likely to gain immediate admission. Well, then, uh, your friend here? Uh, Dr. Watson, my colleague. Well, it's all turned out for the best, Sir Henry. You wanted to consult Mr. Holmes, and he was most anxious to see you. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm glad you fellows are here. Uh, you see, I'm devilish worried about that Greuze of mine. Oh, why, Sir Henry? Well, I bought it at an auction. There was another man bidding against me all the time, and when it was finally knocked down in my name, he became most insulting. He seemed unable to bear not owning the picture himself. He told me bluntly that I didn't enjoy it long. Well, I didn't think much about it at the time, but lately I've been receiving postcards repeating the threat. And I don't like it. That's a fact. Well, you've kept those postcards, I hope, Sir Henry? No, threw them in the fire where they belong. Oh, that's a pity, sir. Can you recall the name of this uh, bidder at the auction who threatened you? No, didn't know his name. Can you describe his appearance? Well, let me see. He was uh, tall, uh, clean-shaven. Mm -hmm. Oh, a curious habit of moving his head from side to side. Moriarty again. Yes, old chap, my supposition was correct. Now, tell me, Sir Henry, is the painting safely guarded? Well, I'd say that it was impregnable, Holmes. It's not in my regular galleries. I had a special strong room built for it when I started to receive threats. It has a lock to which only I know the combination, and a special clockwork device that so controls the room that even I can only enter it uh, during certain daytime hours. And yet, Sir Henry, with such thorough precautions, you appear to be frightened. Why? Well, I hardly dare trust my own shadow, Holmes. But as you possibly know, one of Greer's pupils, a certain Madame Ledoux, uh, imitated his paintings most successfully. Uh, several of the experts were fooled. I confess that I've been frightened lately, uh, since I received the threats, that a clever man might try and substitute a fake painting for the original. If indeed he hasn't already done so. Uh, that's why I was so anxious to get in touch with Dulac. Uh, he'd know a fraud at once. But a substitution would be impossible if you're the only one that knows the, the combination to the lock of the strong room. Well, that's what my logic tells me too, Doctor. And yet I'm very uneasy, I must confess. It's still daylight, Sir Henry. Would it be possible for us to examine the painting now? Well, certainly. Uh, by the way, what happened to Francois de Lac? Did he uh, leave the Carlton Hotel? He did, sir. The circumstances of his departure made us think very uneasy. In what way? His room was empty. There were no signs of luggage, and yet... Come in. Yes, Violet, what is it? This note was just left for you, Sir Henry. I was asked to deliver it at once. Who left it, Violet? Well, he didn't give his name, Sir Henry. But he was a tall, thin man with deep, sunk That's... eyes. Oh. What's the note say? 
Wait. It's the same fellow again. Listen to this. I told you you wouldn't enjoy the painting for long. You didn't, did you? It's got its money off. <laughs> Holmes, I don't see anything funny about this. What makes you laugh? It's obvious uh, that my painting has been stolen. I find nothing funny about it either, Sir Henry. But I must admit a certain pleasure. Once again, I'm crossing swords with an adversary who was more than worthy of my steel. <laughs> We'll hear the rest of Dr. Watson's story in just a second, so I'm just going to remind you that Petri Sherry could really be called the all-round, all-American wine. That's right, Petri California Sherry. Now, the reason I say that is because Petri Sherry is not only a swell before dinner wine, but it's a perfect wine for almost any occasion. When company drops in, serve Petri Sherry. After dinner, when you're just sitting around chatting, Petri Sherry again is just right. Believe me, you couldn't ask for a better all-round wine than sherry. You couldn't ask for a better tasting sherry than Petri. Petri sherry. Well, Dr. Watson, you've kept me on the edge of my chair so far with your story. What happened next? Did Sir Henry Davenant take you to see his famous painting? He did, Mr. Bartell. Together with Miss Violet Jackson, we descended countless flights of stairs. Doors opened where no one expected a door to exist. Finally, after walking down a narrow stone staircase that turned and twisted, we came up against a blank wall. It seemed that we could go no further. But a time clock, a combination of numbers, and a hidden door slid back. We stood in the interior of a small room. A room with no windows and hardly any light. An oil painting stood on an easel before us. It was incomparable Greer's painting of a young girl with a gazelle. We stood looking at it for a brief moment, and then the Henry Governor said, oh, Heaven, the painting is still safe. Yes, Sir Henry. If it still is the same painting. It looks the same, Mr. Holmes. Well, it does to me. The fact remains that only Francois Dulac could tell us if it is the same or a brilliant copy. Yes, and Monsieur Dulac has been uh, silenced. So it would seem. Of course, we asked the experts at the British Museum to pass judgment. Yeah, but how could it have been stolen? It would be impossible to smuggle it out of here and replace it with a copy. There's only one way of being absolutely certain. With your permission, Sir Henry, I should like to make a test. You're going to take a sample of the paint, Mr. Holmes? Yes, that should give us certain proof. Well, very, very, very well. Uh, yeah, you'd better do it, Violet. Uh, but be careful. Remember, the painting cost me 40,000 pounds. My new fragment of paint will be sufficient for the test, won't it, Mr. Holmes? Indeed. With my fingernail, Sir Henry... I'll scratch off a tiny sample. Firstly, hmm. I think it's a dash fine bit of work to have painted it. There you are, Mr. Holmes. Is that enough? Paint splendid, Miss Jackson, splendid. Thank you. Please put it on this envelope for me, will you? That's it. And now, Sir Henry, I shall return to Baker Street and analyze this paint. Within an hour, I shall be able to tell you whether the painting is worth forty thousand pounds or a plug farthing. <laughs> Well, Holmes, did you uh, make the test? I did, Sir Henry. And? I'm afraid there's no doubt that your painting is a fraud. A oh, fraud. A sample of paint that I examined was manufactured not more than 25 years ago, and Greer's died in 1805. Well, I still say that it's a fine painting, whoever did it. I wouldn't mind having it myself. I agree, <laughs> Dr. Watson. In fact, I'd be glad to buy it. It's a brilliant copy, and more than likely it was done by Madame Ledoux. You're remarkably quiet, Sir Henry. Forty thousand pounds. Forty thousand pounds! No, 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 sir, put that knife down. Holmes, help me grab him. Uh, don't worry, gentlemen. I'm not about to commit suicide in despair, if that's what you're thinking. Now, why are you grasping that knife, sir? Because I have work to do in my strong room. I'm going to use this knife to slash that lying camp into forty thousand pieces. <laughs> I suppose you're right, Violet. It, it's childish to mutilate this daub. It's a brilliant fraud, Sir Henry. I'd like to have it. I'll buy it from you gladly. Buy it from me? <laughs> you can have it. Go and make arrangements to have the wretched thing taken away at once. I don't want any frauds in my collection. Yes, Sir Henry. And thank you. Now, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, 
I'll pay you any fee you name if you can tell me how the original painting was stolen. Well, Sir Henry, the how must here precede the who. And the how, I must confess, seems impossible. Yes, I quite agree. This is the sealed metal room. The only entrance is through the door. And that has a combination that only you know, Sir Henry. That's perfectly true. It's impossible for anyone to enter this room without my being present. Or I would have sworn it was. Let's examine these walls, Watson. There might be a secret panel. Uh-huh. Ventilator. No method of entrance here. Huh. Well, you'll find no flaws, I'm sure. This room is built like a giant safe. And the time lock on the door is equally solid. Is the time lock working now? Yes. It started five minutes ago when we opened the door. But don't worry. It's perfectly safe with the door open. But when the door's closed, it couldn't be reopened again, I take it, sir. Not until the morning, Doctor. No. I had the lock specially designed. Very ingenious. This presents as pretty a problem as ever I've tackled, Sir Henry. A large painting stolen and a fake one substituted in a sealed room to which only you have access. I must confess the how seems utterly impossible. Remember what you always say, Holmes. Throw out the impossible and whatever remains, no matter how improbable, must be the possible. Uh, let's consider the who for a moment. Is your butler absolutely reliable? Absolutely. And how about Miss Jackson? Oh, completely trustworthy. Brought letters of recommendation from most of the leading art galleries in London. Intelligent, too. <laughs> and serious-minded. She's made a deep study of mathematics as well as her knowledge of painting. Mathematics? How do you know that, Sir Henry? Well, she had a book with her the other day. <laughs> I was surprised at the title. Could have been a novel. But no, it was called The Dynamics of an Asteroid. It was inscribed to her by the author. Dynamic asteroid and inscribed to her by the author. Thank heavens for your memories, Henry. That book was written by Professor Moriarty. Violet Jackson must be an accomplice of his. Violet? I... The door! Come on, stand it shut! Yes, and it's not very hard to guess who that someone is. Oh, but I... I can't believe that Violet is a criminal. Look, look, look. There's, a, there's a note being pushed under the door. I'll strike a match, will you, old fellow? Right, you are. What's it say, Holmes? Forgive my unladylike eavesdropping. But with Mr. Sherlock Holmes as near the truth as he is, I'm afraid it would be unwise for me to remain here any longer. On the other hand, you are in no danger of smothering in the strong room, but your imprisonment should delay my pursuit till morning. Father Jackson. She's escaped us, Holmes. Don't worry, Watson. If Jackson's failure to procure the painting for Moriarty will land her in a far worse dilemma than anything we could subject her to. Moriarty has never tolerated failure on the part of his minions. A brilliant plot, old fellow, a brilliant plot. Moriarty is at the zenith of his powers. How fortunate that we were able to foil him. What do you mean, foil him? My painting's been stolen. Your painting, Sir Henry? Oh, no, 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 no. It's, uh, it's here in this room. What on earth are you talking about, Holmes? You reminded me of my own dictum, Watson. I discarded the impossible. It was impossible that the picture had been stolen, therefore it had not been stolen. You mean that this painting is the original, Gross? Yes, yes, of course, sir. Surely the whole plot is crystal clear now. Yeah, just about as clear as porridge to me. <laughs> well, then, let me explain. The whole episode of Francois Dulac, the note to me, the empty hotel room, and the significant bloodstains and the apparent disappearance of Dulac were all part of Moriarty's plot. The real Dulac never left France. Moriarty created him in England to lure me into the case. Why in thunder should he want to do that, Holmes? Yes. I should think you're the last person he'd want on the scene. Oh, on the contrary, sir. He knew that I'd grab at his bait, the apparent murder of a Greer's expert who would make it seem likely that your painting had a substitute, Sir Henry. He wanted me to test the painting, which I did. I fell into his trap very neatly. But the paint, Holmes, you said that it was no more than 20 years old. Yes, my dear fellow, the uh, answer should be obvious. I see it. Violet was his accomplice, had prepared the painting beforehand. And carefully scraped off a piece of modern paint. Exactly, Sir Henry. And Moriarty had assumed, quite correctly as it turned out, that as soon as you thought your painting was a fraud, you'd want to get rid of it. And that girl was going to take it out of this house with your full approval. And of course, turn it over to Moriarty. What a fantastic scheme. A devilishly clever one, old chap. If it hadn't been for your chance remark about the book on mathematics, Sir Henry, I'm very much afraid the young lady with the gazelle might even now be on her way out of your house. Holmes, I can't tell you how grateful I am. I'm going to express that gratitude in a very material manner, I assure you. Thank you, Sir Henry, but I wouldn't dream of accepting a fee for this case. I've been shockingly obtuse. I might clearly have let them 
Walk away with your treasure, right under our noses. Uh, we locked in here for the night, sir? I'm very much afraid so, Dr. Watson. So I shouldn't be surprised if the butler notices our disappearance and comes looking for us. But he won't be able to open the door. It'll need a professional locksmith to get us out of here. Well, really, it looks as if we'll spend a very cheerful evening. <laughs> Don't be gloomy, my dear fellow. Oh, gloomy, sir. Well, You're locked in with one of the loveliest girls in history, and she's genuine at that. Like another match, old chap, Toby. What? Let's, uh, let's look at her once again. <laughs> Doctor, that was not only a swell story, but I really learned something. Oh, good, 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 Mr. Bartell. And just what did you learn? Well, uh, this fellow, Gers, the painter... Yeah? <laughs> I know this must sound stupid to you, but until you mentioned his name, I'd never heard of him before. <laughs> until Holmes mentioned his name to me, I'd never heard of him before either. <laughs> but then, we'll never learn about the good things in this world unless somebody tells us. Exactly. That's the way I feel about Petri Wine. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, wait a minute. Here's the way oh, I look at it. There are again. thousands of people who know about Petri Wine and love it, right? Yes, but... But uh, even though it's a wonderful oh, wine, there must be some people who don't know about it. So I tell them about it. And tell them about the Petri family and how they've been making wine for generations and how they've been handing on down from father to son, from father to son, the fine art of turning luscious grapes into delicious wine. Yes, and when I tell them that the name Petri on a bottle of wine is the personal assurance of the Petri family that every drop of wine in that bottle is good wine, well, that's all you have to know. So it adds up to this. If you want a fine wine for any occasion, you want a Petri wine. Because Petri took time to bring you good wine. <laughs> Tonight's Sherlock Holmes adventure was written by Dennis Green and Anthony Boucher and was suggested by an incident in Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's story, The Final Problem. Music is by Dean Fossler. Mr. Rathbone appears through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer and Mr. Bruce through the courtesy of Universal Pictures, where they are now starring in the Sherlock Holmes series. The Petri Wine Company of San Francisco, California... Invite you to tune in again next week, same time, same station. Sherlock Holmes comes to you from our Hollywood studios. This is Harry Bartell saying goodnight for the Petri family. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>